Okay, take two. Especially today, we're gonna do something cool. I'm gonna show you all about this book here at the end, and it's pretty cool. So we're gonna talk about decluttering five areas today. Your home, your finances, digital distraction, your goals, and finally paper, which is the home management binder. We're gonna get into that as well. Now, I can tell you personally from my own life that when I decluttered, I didn't do it because I, you know, I wanted to have more peace and to have more calm. I did it because I wanted more time. <laughs> I did it because I wanted more time. I was tired of cleaning up toys everywhere and clothes everywhere and stuff everywhere. There was always a room I had to be clean. It was always on my mind, even if I didn't consciously know it was on my mind. Your stuff is there on your mind. And I didn't realize this till I minimized and declutterized, declutterized how much peace and how much time I have now. So that's why it's important to me. Now, these are five areas, so you may just wanna pick one area and start with that. And these are some of the best tips I have for these areas, so let's get started. Now, there's a couple rules for this. The rules on what you keep are anything you use and anything you love. That's it. I would get rid of everything else or consider getting rid of everything else. At least box it up, put it away, see if you miss it or need it. I'm telling you, you probably won't. See if you notice the difference um, in your mental health state once your environment is actually clear of clutter, okay? I honestly think your unconscious mind catalogs everything in your house, whether you notice it or not. And in its house, it's, it's running a mental list of, oh, I gotta clean that, I gotta move that, I gotta put that away, I gotta check that, I gotta repair it, I gotta put batteries in it, I gotta see if that's still working. All this stuff it does, whether you're aware of it or not, and that cause, causes added stress. Not to mention just the obvious of, oh my gosh, I have to clean that room, oh my gosh, this room is so messy, oh, I don't know where to begin. All these things add stress to your life, especially if you have things going on outside your home. Um, you know, whether it's work, whether it's kids, whether it's activities or responsibilities you love. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get rid of the excess just to make room for things that we love. If you love it or use it, keep it. That's it. Those are the two main rules that, that I go by. And it's kind of fun. It is. Once you start doing it and you get better and better at it, it it's kind of fun and it's, it comes more naturally and you realize it's so strange. It's, you know, they say that you're using that decluttering muscle and there must be something to it. Okay, so let's start with your home. Your home should be your oasis. So Joshua Becker, who's a big famous minimalist, he says that every room should have a purpose, and I think so, I think that's true. So it's pretty amazing at night when you walk through your house and it's actually clean. If, you know, if it takes more than like 20 minutes or 15 minutes to put your whole house to bed, if you will, um, then you just got too much stuff. So it, like I said, it's pretty amazing to walk through your house and be like, oh, you know, great, it's nighttime and, and everything's pretty much put away and, and, and clean enough so that tomorrow I don't wake up and I don't start off overwhelmed by running into this kitchen and I got a huge bunch of stuff there. Now, this didn't come naturally. I'm not a naturally clean person. I'm not a naturally neat person. In fact, the opposite is true. Um, so, and that's fine when you're one person cleaning up, but now that there's five of us, it's, <laughs> it doesn't come as easy. Um, to pick up so you have to be conscious about hey let's um, get rid of a lot of this stuff and let's just keep what we love and what we use so if you feel stressed for no reason you may want to start looking at each room and decide a purpose for it so the dining room in our house it's for homeschooling and it's for some computer work and it's for meals so those are the three things that go on there the living room for us is it's just it's mainly for me, it's to relax. Occasionally my husband and I watch TV, but mostly it's for me in the afternoons. That's where I relax and decompress and do some reading. Now let's go into some subcategories within the home. So let's start in the kitchen. Basically, try putting everything off the countertops and see if it makes a difference to you, even if you use it every day. The only thing I really keep on the counter besides the microwave is the Vitamix, and that's because it's too heavy to lift out every single day. Um, but your toaster you can put away, pull out, tea kettle put away, pull out um, every day, and just looking at the surfaces, empty surfaces, really will help relax your mind. You may not even notice it till, till you do it. Now one of the things um, to reduce your dishes load is to have one dish per person, one or two dishes per person, even two seems like pushing it, but one dish per person, and then it's really easy if after they eat, if you just rinse it because the food isn't yet stuck on it for the most part. So you just rinse it, um, you can rinse it, run it over with a soapy sponge a little bit and then just leave it on your clean counter till it dries and put it away. You don't need anything special or just put it away right away. Um, and 
it, it just makes it a lot easier than if you let them sit there and stack up and pile up. Then that can obviously be overwhelming. So try cleaning your services and washing your dishes right away and putting them away and see if, it, see if you feel better about life a little bit. So let's go to the next area. The next area is your closet. So separate your clothes into seasons. Remember, it's a lot easier on your mind if you're viewing less, okay? So you separate them into seasons. So then you're in there, you've got your summer clothes going on, for example. You can hang them. I was surprised at hanging them by color. I thought it was kind of silly. It really does make it easier on my mind, easier on the eye. I didn't even realize that was a thing and that it would do that. Um, but only keep your best outfit. So there's a couple ways you can do this. You can try on, what I did is every time I went to the closet, I would, um, if I had a few extra minutes, I would try on another outfit. And if it didn't work, out it went. Um, and, and if it did work, well, great. I had a new outfit to add. Um, so only keeping your best ones, the ones you love or the ones you use. And even if you use it a lot, Joshua Becker said this thing where he said, is there something else you can use instead? So say um, you have, I had five sweatshirts. Um, and so I got rid of two of them because, and I just kept the, no, I kept, I had six sweatshirts and I got rid of two of them. So I only have four, but we're in Germany and we use sweatshirts year round and I like them. So as long as you like them or love them, I mean, you can keep them. It's up to you to decide what stays and goes because this is your life. There's no set rules per se. Another way you can do it is you can do your vacation wardrobe. If you're going away for 30 days, pretend, um, what would you keep and box up everything else? So just your best stuff, keep and box up the rest. And yes, Mickey Mouse to me, I consider that uh, one of my best. It's one of my favorites. I feel like I look good in it and I love it. So I'm definitely keeping that. So it depends. So it, it's different for every person um, out there. And another way you can try it is the 90 day rule. Did you wear it in 90 days? Are you going to wear it in the next 90 days? So I think that's a rule from the minimalist. You can try that and see if that works. Some people turn the hangers around um, and see what works, but basically you don't have to get rid of anything. You can just box it up and see if you need it. See if you need it, see if you notice it. You might not, but it's a lot easier going in in the morning and uh, just seeing what you have. And a lot of minimalist uh, men mostly wear the same thing every day. Um, I mean, I think that would be a great way to go. I just don't think I could. I'm working with what I got. I'm not here to spend a whole bunch of money um, to get a whole new wardrobe just so I can implement that strategy. Um, and I like um, bright colors and wearing different things. So remember, well, I guess I love it. If you like it or love it, you know, if you love it, keep it for sure. If you like it, try and figure out how much you like it, if it's worth it for you to keep it. And if you use it, keep it. And that's it. Those are kind of the only two rules I go by as far as really anything nowadays. Okay, so let's go on to books. This is the last area we're gonna cover in the house, books. Now, as far as books goes, if you have too many books, now if you love books and they're not causing you clutter and you know, it, now remember, you still have to dust them, take care of them, you're looking at them. A lot of times you look at books you haven't read and you're like, oh, I have to read that. So it makes you feel not good about yourself. Just a little bit. It just adds a little bit of additional stress to it. If you haven't read it yet, get rid of it. It served its purpose if it was a gift, you got the gift, you opened the gift, now it's time to move on. Now, as far as one of the things you can do is you can look in the library to see if they have those books. If you're hesitant to get rid of some, look in the library, see if they have a copy of that. Um, see, you could get a digital, if you decide in the future you wanna read it, you know, you could take it out, you could rent it at the library, or you could read it on um, a Kindle or something like that, or, you know, the Amazon, the Kindle app on your phone. So. There's a few different ways as far as books go to do it, but if you reference it every day or if you love it, so that's if you use it or you love it, then keep it. Because when you think about it, it was, say it's only 10 bucks to get a book in the future. I mean, to carry that year after year after year, month after month after month, and have to care for it and emotionally store it and heat it and cool it, you might just, um, it might just be worth it to you to donate it to someone else who's gonna read it and appreciate it right now. Um, one of the things is, is to, my dad wrote a book. Now this falls more into sentimental items because it wasn't on the bookshelf, it was in the sentimental items. He's written a few books and I read part of it, but I didn't finish it. I'm a very picky romance reader. When it comes to um, nonfiction, I can read a lot of books people recommend, but when it comes to romance, I'm, I'm just a very specific type of person. He doesn't think it's a romance, but I think it's a romance. Um, but. So I kept it for so long, I kept it, and every time I look at it, I feel bad, like, oh, you haven't finished that, oh, you haven't finished that, oh, you haven't finished that. 
And now I think I'm gonna part with it. I think I'm gonna part with it, I decided for a couple reasons. Um, one, someone else might really enjoy this book. I mean, it's a good book. So someone else might really enjoy it and then I won't have to feel bad every time I stare at it. Every time I open up the, the memory bin, the sentimental bin. Um, which brings me to the other topic, sentimental things. We are not covering that today. Don't even think about it. Don't even go near it. That is for when you are really strong decluttering wise and, um, and you're ready to tackle that stuff. That, that's like, that's a heavy thing. You, do, you don't need to do that. Some people, when it comes to decluttering, they go room by room by room. Some people go category by category by category. I go category by category just because like Marie Kondo says, I had stuff all over. So I brought all the categories together and went through it. But now I go room by room and just um, whatever room I'm cleaning that day. Uh, if I see extra stuff, then yep, out it goes. Now, as far as children's books goes, just a side note that you can get a lot of them from the library, but if there's very specific books and it says it has it on a Kindle version of it, make sure you check out the Kindle version of it before you actually discard your book, only because the Kindle versions of some kids' books are not that great. For some reason, the picture books and, and things like that, they just weren't specifically made for Kindle. Even people didn't take the time to format them for, for a Kindle or for an iPad um, viewing. So just consider that before you get rid of all your kids' books. All right, let's talk about simplifying your finances. When I started decluttering, finally I went through my finances and thought, all right, let's see what we spent money on for the last two months. And I was kind of shocked. So I pulled out, you know, any credit cards, any bank statements, any, um, you know, Google Play, anything like that, and sat down and thought, and went through and saw what we were spending money on. And I wrote it all down, just pen and paper, wrote it all down, didn't even use the, the computer for it. And then what you can do after you, so I was kind of shocked. I was kind of shocked at, at, first of all, I didn't know we had so many streaming services that we weren't using so right away. And I heard this thing where, you know, if you're using one streaming service, that's fine, why don't you use that one and then switch to another one when you're done using that one, if you want to save a couple dollars a month. So I thought that was kind of a good idea. I know it sounds crazy, but cancel your debit card. I know that sounds crazy. Like but you'll get another one, just order another one, but then at least any automatic payments or things that come off or whatever, you, you kind of get a bit more control over, hey, what's going on with that for some service that you signed up for online that you forgot? You know, like an accounting. I signed up for an accounting program and I couldn't remember which email I signed in on and it was this huge deal to get them canceled, whereas if I had just canceled my credit card, that probably would have solved the problem pretty quick. Now, I don't really budget. I've tried and tried and tried using the every, uh, the every dollar wrap by Dave Ramsey um, app. I've tried and tried and tried, but what I try not to do is just try not to spend money. Um, that's what I do. But generally, I put all the bills in, what we have and what we're spending, and then everything else, which is basically anything from Amazon, anything from Dollar Tree, anything from any store, put it into the food budget. And then that's your money for the month and, and go with that. Um, so that's just, to me, that's the simplest way to budget. That way you're not making 47,000 different categories um, for things. And as far as saving money goes for entertainment, I mean, really think about it. Is there an alternative way? Like we weren't using Netflix that much. We were a little bit, but we could use something else instead. There, we weren't tied to it. There wasn't anything we loved on it. At night I would watch one of the comedies before I went to bed for a bit. And so what I thought is, can I watch something on YouTube since I already paid for the YouTube Thing, why don't I watch something on YouTube? They got a lot of great shows. So that's what I did. I made that switch um, from there. So there's just making those decisions if you wanted to save money. Uh, for me, we do. Um, so, that's, so that's one of the ways I did it. I don't mind spending money, but I wanna do it consciously, right? I want to do what I love or what I um, use as opposed to, so for example, we're overseas right now and we're here for the next nine months. Um, we've been here for a year already, a year or more than a year. But so this weekend, I got a chance to go to Prague for the weekend and I didn't want to spend the money on it. I, I didn't, but at the same time, so I just didn't, I didn't go. But what I do want to spend the money on is Switzerland. I've already gone to Switzerland and I want to go back again. It was amazing. There's so much, I, I feel like I have unfinished business. There's a couple things left that I want to see that I haven't seen yet. So I'm not, a, so I'm just about being conscious about where I put my time and where I put my money. I want it to matter, okay? And so going to Switzerland, it honestly matters to me because there's a couple things left that I haven't seen. 
we have a playground TV show. The kids and I, I film a playground TV show. We go to different playgrounds and they have this playground in Switzerland that has airplane fuselage or fuselage there. So it's like a junkyard, but it is a playground. And that to me is fascinating and I want to see it. I also want to see the St. Beatus Caves as well. We were supposed to, we were, we were so close to making it last time, um, but because we were using public transportation and the train tickets, and by, by the time we got there, there was so much screaming from the kids that I was like, you know what, forget it, let's just go to the hotel. So I feel like there's some things that I wanna go back and do there. So consciously choosing, and I get it, fear of missing out. I also wondered, what was Prague like? And I looked up and I saw some pictures and I was still like, what was it like? Am I missing out? I mean, yeah, you're always gonna be missing out on something. It's kind of not a thing because if I had went, I'd be missing out on stuff here. I'd be missing out on saving that money. So you're always missing out on something is kind of how I look at it. So I don't really think minimalists are cheap. I think they can be looked at as cheap, but what I think it is is that we've had all this stuff and this stuff that we have spent money on was supposed to help us, entertain us, make us feel good, make us feel joy even, even if it was just for a little bit, make us feel excitement, give us that dopamine hit. And then it kind of failed us. Like maybe it did that for a few seconds, but then it kind of failed us. And then we're surrounded by all this stuff and we're not really happy. It didn't make us feel better. It didn't heal us. It didn't help us. And so it just makes you look at things a little bit differently. And it really makes you think before you purchase something, hey, does this fall into, you know, is this gonna matter to me? Let me think about it and see if this matters. Is there something else I could use instead? So just trying to think about it. All right, the next category is digitally decluttering. Digitally decluttering. So this is how I digitally declutter. I know there's lights everywhere, so you're gonna see reflections. There's lights everywhere, windows everywhere. So how I digitally decluttered is step one, I got rid of everything on, the home, on my home screen. I cleared it. Second is that when I swipe to the left, I only put uh, my favorite apps or apps that I use all the time. Third thing I did is I sorted everything into folders, sorted, sorted everything into folders where I would swipe up and I would have all the folders. So you can see I have, you know, social media folders, communication folders, and then an everything else folder, which holds everything else. <laughs> Fourth, I deleted Facebook so that I still use Facebook, but anytime I use it, it just makes it, it's an extra step so that I'm not just randomly scrolling. So I have to go on to the computer to use it or I have to open up a browser on my phone to use it. That's another thing is I got rid of another, I got rid of, um, I had two internet browsers on my phone. I got rid of one and kept the other and then I was able, I went through and I deleted all the windows I had opened. All the different, I had a lot of different windows open um, for, or different screens open, I guess you could say. Different tabs, I think you call it on my phone, so I went and I consciously got rid of those. Now, I don't have Instagram, um, so it wasn't, it's not an issue for me, Instagram, and going through Instagram wasn't an issue, but I would as well put that on the phone if I need, or put that on um, the computer, just if I wanted to, the whole point is, is to not have anxiety or stress associated with your phone, not to be consciously checking your phone all the time, so in order to do that, you gotta kinda create some boundaries. So the next thing I did, was I got a zero inbox. So in order to do that is a zero inbox so that you have really no emails in your inbox. Now that can be crazy stressful if you're like me and you've had the same emails for like 20 years and you've never deleted anything. Well, then I was like, how am I gonna do this? Cause I tried batch deleting, I tried all these things and I just had, I had way too many. So what I did is I opened up, I went to outlook.com, got a new email address, and then I went to my vacation responders at to all my other email addresses and hit, um, you know, set up a vacation responder, an automatic responder that said, hey, I'm digitally decluttering something along these lines. And I get a lot of spam. So if you're an actual person, here is my new email address. Please email me there. And people will do that. People have done that. So I still go into the old emails. and I still check it every once in a while just to see if I missed anything. Uh, but for the most part, that's my new e inbox. When stuff comes in, I deal with it. I either, I reply to it. If I need to save it, I put it in a folder just so that I can have almost a zero inbox. And I leave tasks in there till they're done and then I zero inbox it just so I got no emails sitting on me. It's, it's quite relaxing. And then I choose, I have no notifications. So that's the last thing is to make sure you have, number six is make sure, 
Step six is turn off all notifications. Actually, there's a seventh step too. So step six, get rid of all notifications on your phone so that you are choosing when you respond. And I get it. Some people may be like, hey, why didn't you respond to my email? Just be honest. Hey, I'm trying to separate time from my phone. I'm trying to do this thing where I get back into life and don't, and I'm not connected to my phone all the time. So I may not be able to respond as quickly. You can also auto respond with that as well. Being honest is not the easy route, but it's the better route. You'll feel better overall, but it's not an easy route. So anyone who says, oh, being honest is easy. Yeah, it's not. Um, but lying is also not easy. So which one do you feel better about? All right, and the seventh is, I encourage you to get a Kindle or something like that. I get it, you're adding a new digital thing. Or, I mean, I would say an iPad because an iPad does load faster when you turn it on. But basically what I use my Kindle for is so that A, I'm separating my time from my phone and B, because my hobby is to read. I love reading. So this way I can do it not on my phone. I'm just separating that emotionally. I'm separating from my phone. Another thing you can do on your phone is turn on airplane, but I'm separating it. I'm separating time from my phone. And if I want to do internet scrolling or things like that, I can do it on the Kindle as well, just to kind of separate yourself from your phone a few hours a day, separate yourself from it. And at night when I go to bed, I put on airplane mode, or I guess I just turn off Wi-Fi. Every night I turn, um, yeah, I turn off Wi-Fi when I go to bed. So I have something pre-downloaded, some rain I can listen to, and videos that are pre-downloaded just so that that whole time at night, even if I'm not sleeping, that I just got that distance, that space from the world around, if you will. It's, it's, it's a better way to be, it's a relaxing way to be, I find it for me. So those are some ideas. It's not that I really love the Kindle, it's that it's cheaper than an iPad. And um, so, it, like I said, when you turn it on, I don't find it loads as quickly, um, but they're, they're relatively inexpensive and they'll usually replace them for free. Um, when you buy them, it says, oh, get free replacements for it for two years and things like that. So if something does happen to it, I mean, you, you can't really go wrong as far as that goes. But yeah, it does take a bit more time to pull up my books. It does take a bit more time to open the, the internet and stuff. All right, goals. So for years and years and years and years and years and years and years, I read all about productivity and tried to be the most productive person in the entire world. Now I'm going for simple but effective. I'm going for essentialism, if you will. Simple but effective. So I'm minimizing the goals that I'm doing, but they're more powerful. So you choose three goals a day. And you know, I didn't even need a day planner for this. I found I had one of these lined books and as you can see, I had one of these lined books. I put the main goals up in the corner. I put, you know, and I put a letter for the days of the week and then whatever the main outing is there. And then below that, I, you know, the day before, what goals am I going to work on the next day? So what are my top three? Usually I try to keep it to three. What are the top three things I'm going to get done? And that's it. And as far as goals go, um, as far as goals go, you know, I have this channel, the Health Anxiety channel, but my favorite channel, my passion channel is my kids channel. So I'm gonna show you about a minute, not, not even a minute, uh, 30 seconds from the kids channel and then I'll explain to you where I'm going with that, okay? So take a look at this. How many different playgrounds we've been to now, Locke? 100? I think we might have. Might have been 100, maybe even 200. So we've been to Pirate Playground, We've been to water playgrounds. We've been to dinosaur playgrounds. We've been to construction truck playgrounds. Now, what I was getting at is that I, we can have so many passions and so many areas and so many goals we want to pursue. And what if, say for, instead of, you know, saying you have three big goals or, you know, five big goals that you want to accomplish for the year, what about, and then you work, you know, Monday you work on one, Tuesday you work on one. What about if you just did, you know, for the next week, this is the goal I worked on. For the next week, this is the, the channel I work on. Or for the next two weeks, these are the, I'm filming videos for this channel and I'm going to edit videos for this channel. It's easier on your mind than starting and stopping projects and time as well, because you've got to open things up, remember where you were. Whereas if you just continue with it. So for example, that's why people are writing a book. They're like, Hey, for the next 30 days, I'm just writing my book, so you may not hear from me. Because it's a lot, it's just, it's a lot easier to just focus on one task at a time. It's a lot simpler and it's a lot more effective than jumping tasks. 
So you may want to consider that. Now I have a lot of passions, but I had to narrow it down to what matter most. And now my kids channel, I don't make any money from my kids channel. It's purely a love that I do that. We go to different playgrounds throughout the world and that's purely, <laughs> that's purely love that I do it. I enjoy it. My kids enjoy, my kids enjoy it cause we have fun. We play around, we play tag there. I mean, um, so we have a good time and then I come home and the creative element of it, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I get to edit it and I'm creating something and then I get to share it, um, with the few people <laughs> that watch it. And, uh, so I don't do it for the money. Clearly. Um, I do it just because I love doing it and that is okay. There is nothing wrong with doing something because you love to do it. That's another thing. If you have mental health problems, if you have anxiety, you need to find something you love to do. Now, obviously that didn't come up by, it, it kind of came up by trial and error, right? So I thought, you know what, to be honest, I had this child Lachlan, uh, my son Lachlan, it's just such an amazing personality that some of the things he would do, I just started filming them because it was just, he just always amazed me. And so I started filming him doing these things and then it just progressed um, from there. It just progressed from there and editing it and adding things into it. I just found such a love for it that I do it. I just do it because I love it. And it's perfectly acceptable to have a passion you do not make money from. That is okay. Just do it because you enjoy it. Share it because you think it should be shared. You don't need a deeper element to it. This health channel I have because I want to help people with health anxiety. I had health anxiety from when I was five. I think five years old was the first time I remember having health anxiety. And now it's, it's not a strong, like it used to be at a 10 or 11 on a scale as far as, um, as far as anxiety was concerned. And now I'm down at a one, two, a three. That's not a bad place to be. So I have all these ticks, tricks and tips and things I've learned and I share it. So that's what I do on this channel. So that's my helping channel, but there's also my just passion channel for no other reason. Now remember there's two types of passion. There's the passion you pursue that energizes you and there's the passion that drains you. For example, um, I've studied health now for almost 15 years. So I'm very passionate about all natural health and diet and healing your body and things like that and eating well, but it drains me to talk about. Emotionally, I find it draining because people don't see it. People don't do it. A lot of people don't. And so I find it emotionally draining on my time and my mind. So if, it, if you're passionate about it, but it drains you, stay away from it. If you're passionate about it and it excites you, that's a go. That's a go. If you love it, you're meant to be doing it. Even if it's just, even if it's just on the side, just find some time for it. Find some time. If you think about your life, there's some things you can change. If you don't have enough time for yourself, then there's some things you need, some changes you need to make and maybe decluttering it and minimizing your house will help. All right. The last thing I'm going to talk about is one of my favorite categories, paper clutter, paper clutter. Don't get the mail until you're ready to deal with it all. I get it right now. You got a stack of mail. You got to go through. I just did mine a few days ago. It was overwhelming, but I was like, you know what? That's it. I'm done. I want to just be able to deal with mail to get mail, collect mail and go through it right then throw out adverts that are trying to sell me stuff and get down right to the nitty gritty of what I need to do. Either take a picture of it and put it up on my phone for later use, but try to deal with it. If it's under two minutes, try to deal with it right then. If it's a bill, try to pay it right then just to deal with it right then and then write down paid on it, maybe save it for reference, maybe take a picture of it and save it for reference online. Just so we want the less amount of stuff in your environment, in your room, in your head, right? So even stuff you can't see, even stuff you can't see, it's still kind of there. Let's try and get rid of as much stuff as we can. So in order to do that, you gotta go through all the backlog. You gotta go through all the backlog, sit down, find some time. I get it, it's not fun. It's not fun. It takes a couple hours to sit down and really be like, all right, that's it. That's what I'm doing today. Let me go through garbage, 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 garbage. Did I send in this bill? Did I not send in this bill? You're like, oh. if you don't know where to start there, start with stuff you can throw out, go through the whole pile and see what you can throw out. And then this is the home and family management binder. So I've had this for years now. I originally got it in case, because we used to live in Florida in the Brevard barrier coast there. And so when we lived there, there was, um, my husband was a hurricane planner. So we couldn't, we, um, at Patrick air force base there. So we would stay longer than most families when an emergency came. And so I just wanted to be able to have a book that I could take with me on every hurricane. That's what I would call them. It's a hurricane, uh, when we would go away. So, 
You can also use it for floods, for really anything. And what it's got in here is basically it has, well, there's some stuff I can't show you, but it's important documents that I don't wanna throw out. Yeah, I could take a picture of some of them. There are some of them I could take a picture and put up online, but a lot of these here, like these are keys for different houses. So they got these little packets for keys for different houses. We got bill of sale for the car that we own. Um, we have a packet here that is the older car that we have, a restored um, Chevelle that I believe we're gonna, that we're working to sell, but it's a packet of all the different repairs we have done on it and things like that. We got the last will and testament here. We have a vaccine, because we move a lot, we have any vaccine records of people in our family if they apply to them. So no judgment either way here from me. You're not gonna get that. I got my own life to worry about. I don't have time to judge yours. <laughs> we have, um, you know, just different things that you need to keep. So warranty deeds for houses, you're gonna need those. Um, so deeds for houses, deeds for property. Um, any court orders, like a divorce or separation, things like that, keeping those. And then this is the most important packet right here. This is travel documents. So basically passports, birth certificates, credit cards that you're not, that you're not carrying with you on you. Do you know what I mean? Like cards, because only keep the main cards on you, your social security cards, um, things like that. Um, our marriage certificate is in here. So anything we need to travel is in this packet here. And that's about it. And then there's uh, my husband's diploma that I haven't scanned yet. I guess I don't know if you scan a diploma, probably. And different certificates and awards he's gotten, that, just that I haven't scanned yet. And I will eventually. So that is what we got in there. I also have our blood types in here as well. You can go further than this. Like if you're, if you want to plan, like if something happens to me, I want my husband to be able to go get this book, open this book and be like, okay, these are the accounts we have. This is the passwords for them. These are, since I do a lot of the finances for the family. Okay, the, this is where our money's stored. These are how, this is how I get it out. This is how I transfer it in and things like that. And now, another thing too is, <coughs> pardon me, is if you, is say someone's gonna have to take care of you in your old age. One of the things you might wanna put in here is all the stuff that I mentioned as far as bank accounts goes, but also who your doctors are. Um, maybe like for me, if something happened to me, who our kids' doctors are, how they contact them. You could have, so you can go further in depth if you want. I haven't yet, um, but you can, especially because it's tough to do that for me because we move so often. <laughs> We've moved, I think 10 times in eight years, I think. Um, we moved all around the United States and um, further out as well. And we're not done moving yet. So, so yeah, so you can keep like who their doctors are, what medicines they take, where you get the medicines from, whatever you need, where they get their glasses fixed, when they get their glasses fixed, and things like that, optometrists. So if you're older and you want someone to be able to, you know, to have an easy transition into taking care of you, where you wanna go, what your last, you know, what your requests are, things like that. It might help you feel in control, I guess, a little bit more control of the future. It might give you that sense of, of control, if you will, but really, that's kind of an illusion, right? We don't know, even if doctors tell you, no one knows when your end time is. No one knows, and that's one of the things with health anxiety too that we try to focus on is, um, there's no guarantee. There is no guarantee that this won't make you sick. There's no guarantee that it will make you sick. Both are options. Um, so that is what I love. And there's a little list up on the screen and I'm gonna put a link in the description that you can go and get that list if you wanna download it. But again, it's up on the screen there so you can take a look at it. And some people put in birthday dates. They have a whole list of their, of their family members' birthdays and then they can look up, hey, it's April, such and such a birthday. I think, you know, I used to do that, but now as far as essentialism goes and really trying to minimize my life, um, I forgot my husband's birthday this year. So that's just not something people can rely on me for. And if they're upset about that, I can apologize and they are allowed to be upset, but there's not much I can do about that. Now I can set up reminders on my phone for the main people in my life, like my mother-in-law, my mother, um, and things like that. 
Um, not surprisingly, I know my children's birthdays. <laughs> That's it. And I'm always excited when they come. When oh, it's his birthday. Oh, it's gonna be his birthday. Oh, how old is he going to be? Oh, what am I gonna do for it? Oh, you know, and and things like that. And you know, there's more videos you can do as far as minimizing birthdays and minimizing. You want to have as little stress on you as possible, and as little expectation. You know, you really gotta gotta kind of lower those down to oh. Just to have, I don't know what I'm going with, but either way, a simpler life. So now, what I need from you is if you like this video, if you want me to make more videos on this, because I do have more information on minimizing and decluttering, if you want more information, I'm going to need you to subscribe or to like this video so at least I have some idea. Like, yes, someone would like to see me make more videos on it. If not, that is okay too, and I wish you well. Can you say please like and subscribe? Please like you like. And hit the bell for notifications. Hit the bell, you know what that's saying.